The number one strategy is that they pick up black sheep of the community and they portray these people as though they are exemplary Muslims. They pick up certain Muslims, the black sheep, who are namesake Muslims, who are not practicing Muslims, and they portray these people as though they are exemplary Muslims. For example, if there's a Mercedes car, and if you want to judge how good the Mercedes car is, and if you put behind the steering wheel an unexperienced driver, and he bangs up the car, who will you blame? The car or the driver? But naturally, you will blame the driver. If you want to judge how good the car is, look at its specifications, look at its fuel consumption, look at its safety measures, look at its top speed. And if you want to practically judge how good the car is, put behind the steering wheel an experienced driver. Similarly, don't judge Islam based on the followers. Judge Islam based on the authentic sources, that is the glorious Quran and authentic hadith. It's the authentic sayings of the Prophet and if you want to practically judge how good Islam is, look at our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The second strategy used by the media is that they quote the glorious Quran and other religious scriptures, but they quote it out of context. And one famous verse used is Surah Tawbah, chapter number 9, verse number 5. And Arun Shuri, one of the strongest critics of Islam, he writes in his book, The World of Fatwas. And he quotes Surah Tawbah, chapter number 9, verse number 5. And he says that the glorious Quran says that wherever you find a kafir, into bracket is indicating Hindus, you should kill them. If you open the glorious Quran, this verse is mentioned that wherever you find a kafir, you should kill him. But it's out of context. For the context, you have to start reading from the beginning of the surah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about a peace treaty between the mushriks of Makkah and the Muslims. And this peace treaty was unilaterally broken by the mushriks of Makkah. And by the time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reaches verse number two, he is giving the mushriks of Makkah an ultimatum, a warning that put things straight in four months time, otherwise declaration of war. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reaches verse number five, He's telling the Muslims to fight against the enemies, against the mushriks. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Tawbah, chapter number 9, verse number 5, that wherever you find the kafirs, wherever you find the enemies, in the battlefield, you should kill them. But natural, any army general, in order to boost the morale of his soldiers, he will say, wherever you find the enemies, kill them. For example, if there's a war between USA and Vietnam, and the U.S. Army General says that wherever you find the Vietnamese, you should kill them in the battlefield. If I misquote the U.S. Army General, and if I say the U.S. Army General is saying today that wherever you find the Vietnamese today, you should kill them, I would make him sound like a butcher. It is in context that wherever you find the Vietnamese in the battlefield, you should kill them. But natural, any army general, to boost the morale of his soldiers, he will say, wherever you find the enemies, kill them. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to boost the morale of the Muslims, he's saying, wherever you find the enemies, kill them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not say, okay, go run away. So it is in context. Wherever you find the enemies, you should kill them in the battlefield. We have several such examples. If you read in the Gospel of Matthew, a similar example is there. It is even mentioned in the Hindu scriptures. It is mentioned in Bhagavad Gita, chapter number 1, verse number 46, 47, 48. Krishna is giving an advice. Arjun, he leaves down his weapons in the battlefield and he says that I would prefer dying, being killed unarmed, rather than fighting my own relatives. Further, it is mentioned in Bhagavad Gita, chapter number 2, verse number 2 and 3, that Krishna says to Arjun, Oh Arjun, how could you become so impotent? It is the duty of a Kshatriya, of a warrior to fight. And if you fight, you shall enter the heavenly planets. Now, if I misquote Krishna and say that Krishna is saying to fight against your own relatives, and Arjun leaves down his weapons in the battlefield, and he says, I would prefer dying unarmed rather than fighting my own relatives. So if I misquote Krishna and say that Krishna is saying that fight against your own relatives, it would be wrong. It is in the battlefield. Wherever you find the enemies, you should kill them. So it is in context. And the master key for doing dawah to the non-Muslims. It is Surah Al Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 64. Come to common terms as between us and you. 
which is the first term, Allah na'bud illallah, that we worship none but one Almighty God. And Arun Shuri, after quoting verse number five, he jumps to verse number seven. Why? Because verse number six has a reply to a sickness. <laughs>